Okay, quick question. What was the best video game console of the early 1980s? That's right, it was the ColecoVision. Why? Well, today I'm gonna count down my picks for the 10 best games for the system in an attempt to convince you to join me on the ColecoVision bandwagon. Yes, it's me, Paladin, again, and I'd sure appreciate it if you'd smash the subscribe button and give us a like so we can alert you to when we drop more wonderful, fantastic, insightful gaming content. Are you ready? Make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened and prepare for my top 10 games on the ColecoVision. Number 10, Mousetrap. Mousetrap was released initially for the arcade in 1981 and then ported over to the ColecoVision the following year. In the game you play as a mouse, running through different mazes and eating up pieces of cheese. Cats also roam the maze looking to make you a meal. And if that wasn't bad enough, a hawk also shows up from time to time to try and snatch you up. Don't worry though, there are bones scattered in the four corners of the maze that you can collect which allows you to turn into a dog for a short period of time. And then you can gobble up the cats. And if you need a quick escape, you can run to the center of the maze called the inbox, which randomly ports you to one of the four corners. Critics of the game considered it another Pac-Man knockoff, while others thought it was just plain fun. It looked fantastic on the ColecoVision, and in my opinion, was fun. Even though it did borrow a lot of elements from Pac-Man, it takes the number 10 spot on my list. Number 9, Root Beer Tapper. Originally sponsored by Anheuser-Busch, Tapper let you play as a bartender serving beer to thirsty patrons. Collect empty mugs, pick up tips, you have to keep moving to keep the customers happy. The arcade game was initially sold to bars, but in 1984, to avoid promoting alcohol to kids, the game became Root Beer Tapper on consoles, with the bartender being replaced by a guy serving soda. In the game, the player has four bars or counters to keep watch over, with a keg of soda at the end of each bar. As customers file in, the player must slide drinks down the counter to them, while cleaning up empties and collecting tips at the same time. As the game progresses, the pace and amount of customers increases, making it more difficult to keep pace. If the player fails to catch an empty mug, a full mug slides off their bar, or a customer reaches the keg, all will result in the player losing a life. Once all lives are lost, the game is over. Fun game, fun concept, Root Beer Tapper is definitely worth playing even today and lands at the number nine spot on my list. Number eight, Frenzy. Frenzy was yet another arcade port for the ColecoVision, staying true to the idea of the console excelling at bringing the arcade experience to the home. Frenzy definitely fit the bill. A sequel to Berserk, Frenzy places players once again in a maze full of homicidal robots. Survive as long as you can fighting robots, traveling room to room while accumulating points. If a player lingers in a room for too long, it will attract the attention of Evil Otto, a big smiley face who bounces around through walls and robots just to get to the player and kill them. Otto is not a nice ball. While there were many changes in Frenzy, it still remained true to its predecessor, Berserk. The gameplay was still edge of your seat frantic and fun, and actually managed to improve in many ways. What the game didn't do is become an easier version of Berserk. Just the opposite, in fact. For this reason, Frenzy was not as popular with gamers who had loved Berserk. I, however, found Frenzy an improved version of the classic and appreciated the level of difficulty. Frenzy makes my list at number eight. Number seven, Gorf. You like Space Invaders? Fan of Galaxian? 
then GORF is right up your alley. GORF, or Galactic Orbiting Robot Force, puts the player in control of a lone interstellar space force ship whose sole mission is to stop the Gorfians from conquering the Earth. The game debuted for the arcade in 1981 and was ported over to the ColecoVision in 1983. The arcade version included a Galaxian level, but due to copyright laws was omitted from the console versions of the game. Players could move their ship freely in all directions in the lower third section of the screen, shooting lasers to destroy all the Gorfian ships. The game was comprised of five levels, each with a different and distinct style. If a player completes all five missions, they increase in rank and the game starts again with a higher difficulty. While Gorf borrowed ideas, look and feel from other successful games, when these elements were all brought together, it made for a very entertaining and challenging game. Gorf earns the number seven spot on my list. Number six, Pepper Two. In a fantastic follow-up to Pepper, no, I'm just kidding, there never was a Pepper, but there was a Pepper 2 and was released for the arcade in 1982, and a year later it was ported to the ColecoVision. Despite the title, the game has nothing to do with spices or cooking, but rather tasks the player with navigating Pepper the Angel throughout several mazes. As Pepper makes their way through the maze, they leave a zipper, which allows Pepper to zip up segments of the maze until every segment has been sealed. For every section sealed, the player accumulates points. Be on the lookout for enemies such as Roaming Eyes and the Zipper Ripper, who has the ability to unzip segments Pepper has completed. These enemies can all be thwarted by zipping segments containing pitchforks that turns Pepper into a devil for four seconds, allowing the player to kill Roaming Eyes and freeze Zipper Rippers. The game was originally to be titled Zipper, but that name was already taken by another product. Despite the strange name, Pepper 2 was a quirky, fun game. It lands at number six. Number five, Fortune Builder. Are you a fan of simulation games like SimCity? Ever wonder where the game got its inspiration? Well, look no further than Fortune Builder that was released for the ColecoVision in 1984, five years before SimCity. Put on your thinking cap and try to build the best city you can with the resources at your disposal. With a large initial tract of land, you can build anything from simple homes and roads to casinos and marinas. It won't be long before the player will find themselves sucked into the addictive gameplay, looking at their watch and realizing three hours have magically disappeared from their life. The single player game in Fortune Builder is a ton of fun as you build up your city, but the game really shines on the two player mode where you can compete against each other or team up to build the perfect metropolis. Fortune Builder was proof positive that the ColecoVision wasn't just an arcade port machine. If you want to see where SimCity came from, then definitely check out Fortune Builder, the number five game on my list. Number four, Miner 2049er. This platformer was originally developed for the Atari systems in 1982 and later ported to other systems, including the ColecoVision in 1983. In the game, you play as Bounty Bob, a Canadian Mountie who is tasked with the apprehension of Yukon Johan. The only problem is he's believed to be in nuclear Ned's abandoned uranium mines. There are 11 mines to explore, and each one has a time limit the player must beat or they will run out of oxygen and die. Bob must explore every level, walking over sections of floor turning them to a different color. Bob must also avoid radioactive creatures and obstacles throughout the game. Bob can also collect various objects to earn more points. The game was hailed by many for its design and fun gameplay. 
The animation and sheer number of levels were big selling points for players and critics alike. Miner 2049er sold well and garnered many awards, with the ColecoVision version of the game considered by a majority of gamers as the best console version. Miner 2049er takes the number four spot on my list. Number three, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. That's right. We've got a tie for the number three spot on my top 10 list. I decided to place Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. for the ColecoVision in one spot, instead of listing the two games separately. Hey, sue me, it's my list, my rules. If you play video games, then you don't really need to know about the design and the gameplay that made Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. titans of the platform game genre. Coleco back in the day went head to head with Atari to acquire the console rights for the Nintendo arcade hit, and they won. Thus, Donkey Kong became a bundled launch title for the ColecoVision in 1982, leading to $500 million in sales for the company in that year's holiday season alone. Coleco also licensed it out to Atari and Mattel, but the ColecoVision version of Donkey Kong was superior. Critics and gamers hailed Donkey Kong on the ColecoVision as one of the best arcade to console ports ever made. Donkey Kong Jr. followed a year later on the ColecoVision and improved upon its predecessor in nearly every way. Many consider Donkey Kong Jr. the better of the two on the ColecoVision, but you know, I feel they're both fantastic games. All right, all right, all right. You want to know why I begged and pleaded my parents day after day after day for a ColecoVision in the first place? Well, look no further than Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Number two, Zaxxon. All right, let's get this out there right away. Zaxxon, which was released in 1981, is one of my favorite arcade games of all time. With its isometric projection, graphics, and fun gameplay, Zaxxon quickly became a smash hit in North America. A year after its release, Zaxxon was ported to various consoles and computers. Among the consoles of the time, the ColecoVision version was the best, keeping the isometric view from the arcade, whereas the Atari 2600 and Intellivision didn't. The game was the number one non-bundled selling game for the ColecoVision in 1982 and much of 1983. If you're not familiar with the game, you fly a space fighter through two huge fortresses, only being able to move up and down and side to side at a constant rate of speed. You shoot various objects in the fortresses, including fuel drums, which can also refuel your ship. Many hailed the ColecoVision version of the game as one of the best games available on any system. I myself spent many hours playing this classic, and even today, it's still a blast to play. Hey, are you finding yourself angry and depressed? I left off some of your favorite games for the ColecoVision? Well, have no fear. Before I unveil my pick for the number one game, here are some of the honorable mentions that almost made my top 10.
Number one, war games. When I first sat down to make my list of the top 10 games for the ColecoVision, I immediately put this game as number one. Why, you ask? It's not a great platformer. It's not chock full of fantastic graphics. So why war games? As a kid of the Cold War 1980s, two of the movies I remember most were Red Dawn and you guessed it, War Games. Growing up in the 80s in the United States, you lived under the constant threat of nuclear war with the then Soviet Union. When I saw the NORAD defense computer screen for the first time in the movie War Games, I was hooked. I dreamed about defending the nation against incoming ICBMs and saving millions of American lives. Okay, I didn't get out much. In the game, the U.S. is divided up into six sectors with military bases and cities. You must use anti-ballistic missiles, interceptors, subs, and a satellite to shoot down enemy missiles. You have to frantically switch from sector to sector to shoot down these attacking ICBMs and bombers. Each sector has a DEFCON, or defense condition status, depending on the amount of damage that sector has taken and the number of enemy units present. If a sector stays at DEFCON 1 for 60 consecutive seconds, it initiates a full U.S. counterstrike. Game over. Adios Earth. Just like in the movie, the attack is a computer glitch you must stop. Otherwise, the U.S. will launch a real counterattack. This game was so different from all the others on the ColecoVision at the time and offered up an awesome gameplay experience that I still remember fondly to this day. And that's a wrap for yet another top 10 list. Are you a fan of the ColecoVision? What games would you have had on your list? Let me know in the comments. This is Paladin signing off and I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody.